Hello, everyone. Uh, if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you probably will have noticed that I have a love of electromechanical devices. From the jukebox that I've been slowly working on fixing up, to my Hammond organ with its tone wheels and electromagnetic pickups, even to my Tascam reel-to-reel -reel machine with its moving parts and moving tape guide pieces, to the stereo console with an automated record player that drops record after record onto the platter, all the way to my Frieden CW8. Now, yes, I did say CW8 and not DW10. I messed up a bit with my initial research. Finding specific Frieden models is an absolute pain in the ass, and with a huge lack of specific information, and most of the websites dedicated to the topic looking like they came out in the late 90s and haven't been touched since, it's a little difficult to find any information. So I was completely wrong on the model of Frieden I have, and like an idiot, I never checked the manufacturing stamp on the bottom. Looking at it, it's a Frieden CW8, an 8-digit input, 9-digit counter, and 16-digit accumulator electromech calculator. Of course, the DW10 has a 10-digit input keyboard, where mine very obviously has 8. However, there is a little discrepancy from what I can tell. You see, on the left side of the machine, my unit has a blank standoff where the second lever is meant to go but it has no slot cut for it into the faceplate. Not to mention, the mechanism is entirely missing from my CW8 for some reason. Anyways, if I've said DW10 anywhere in this video in my previous narrations, I'll be editing in a CW8 over it. Whoops. Born the 11th of April, 1891, in Sweden, Carl Frieden lived an incredibly interesting life. From periods of incredible misfortune to sudden windfalls of prosperity, Frieden was a fascinating man. However, our focus today is on his final endeavors, the Frieden Calculating Machine Company, or Frieden Incorporated. Established in 1933, Frieden found success with the Model C-10, an electric-powered mechanical calculator with roots in the 19th century arithmometer. Quite the stylish package, the C-10 featured automated division, 10 digits for entry, an 11-digit counter, and a 21-digit accumulator. These machines employed the Frieden Rotoflow one-way drive a mechanism that, unlike its contemporaries, would not have to reverse the direction of the input force to do different calculations. Without that pause to reverse directions, the one-way drive sped up calculations and allowed for easy usage of a simple electric motor to power the device. Several models were produced in the following years, with most sharing the exact same mechanism, with iterative improvements taking the form of additional automation and functions. These include the quite popular STW-10 that featured a fully automatic multiplication system, as well as my own model, the CW-8. When I picked up the Frieden from the auction house, it was not in the best of shape. All three calculators I picked up were covered in this white corrosion, and it was obvious none of them had been touched in years. At first, I wasn't too sure I'd even be able to get any of them working. Of course, I managed to get the Frieden working in just a couple of days, uh, through dedicated poking and prodding of random parts until I figured out which pieces had seized in place. All the way over. A bit of WD-40 professional to strip the grease and leave a layer of lubricant was all it took to get the Frieden about 90% functional. The unit, however, was still covered in white, corroded powder, as well as oil buildup from fingers and the like, so while I had the machine open for repairs, I figured I may as well do a little bit of cleaning as well. I started with the carriage dials. Several of those were in pretty bad shape. It was a simple process of spraying with isopropyl, wiping down with some paper towel, then manually advancing the counters to clean the rest of the dial. 
I did the same thing to the result dials, twisting the manual set knobs back and forth to wipe the counter against the paper towel. Did a fairly good job of pulling the corrosion off of the plastic. The keys were definitely not in the best of shape, with several keys showing signs of repeated contact as well as corrosion clinging to the sides of each of the keys. I started by removing as much of the buildup on the keys as possible, though my initial attempts weren't super successful. I was too lazy to find my microfiber cloth, but eventually came to realize that the paper towel wasn't cutting it. Using the cloth was definitely a step in the right direction. With a little elbow grease, the oil started lifting, leaving the keys clear and easy to read. I made a few passes over the keyboard, getting more and more grime off each time. Eventually, the keyboard was in considerably better shape, save for a little bit of white corrosion that was still proving difficult to get off. Moving on, I started in on the operation keys to the right of the unit. These had some of the worst corrosion, huge amounts of the white stuff, as well as some slight damage to the plastic of the keys. Thankfully, the alcohol did an excellent job eating away at the corrosion, and it managed to leave the paint on the keys unharmed. I did the same thing to the flip side of the keys, and with that, the input interface has been cleaned. The next big item on our list was to clean the exterior face plates of the Frieden which proved to be a pretty simple task. A little cleaning with the cloth and alcohol took off small deposits of corrosion and grime, as well as a few fairly hard to clean spots that required some more intensive cleaning. The side plates had some bad corrosion around the plastic lettering that quite satisfactorily dissolved right away with the alcohol. A little scrub and that's the left plate done. The right plate was more or less identical, though there's been some pretty significant damage to the front of the plate. My guess is that the previous owner would have rested their hand around this area to make it easier to quickly enter an operant. Thankfully, the back plate and the carriage plate both were fairly clean from the start, and with that, we have finished our first round of cleaning. While disassembling my Frieden, I accidentally took these two arms off of the carriage plate. These are actually the arms responsible for holding the plate in place over the counter and accumulator dials, so a little bit of a whoops there. I just screwed them back on and stuck the foam back where it had originally been and seemed right as rain. With the interface all cleaned, I figured it was time to try and cut through the decades of grease and grime that had built up on the metal mechanism parts. Using my trusty can of WD-40 to eat away at the grease, and the alcohol when needed to eat away at whatever else might be left, I wiped off layer after layer of grime and gunk. This back mechanism was probably the worst of all of the exposed mech parts. It uh, kind of sits at a slight angle, and that definitely would have encouraged dust and debris to settle on and uh, thicken the oil. Moving on, the main mechanism exposed on the right side was super simple to clean. Most of the parts were actually surprisingly clean, so I focused on the few spots that had some blemishes on the nice shiny finish. While cleaning, I remembered another goof that I had from disassembly. I had removed the left standoff for the back plate, where the back plate attaches essentially to the, the bottom plate of the machine. I uh, can't stop goofing. The left side mechanism and bottom plate were definitely needed some TLC, so I worked away with the cloth and got up more of that nasty grease really surprised me how shiny the bottom still was, even with that grime sitting on it for god knows how long. With most of the metal components cleaned and shined up a bit, I wanted to give the Frieden one last lubrication before I buttoned it back up. Starting over on the left side, where I was already working, I got the WD-40 Professional and started lubricating the moving parts. After spraying, I'd set the calculator to run to let it all of the pieces rotate and move, hopefully taking in as much of the lubricant as possible. 
Moving on from there, I made sure that the carriage movement handler was behaving well and that none of the other linkages were stiff. Finally, just have to grease a few of the main points in the main mechanism. While I'm here, I also quickly cleaned up that bottom plate and realized I'd missed it before. Oops. And with that, all we have to do is reassemble. But let's take a quick look at the CW8 all shiny and clean before we put the face plates back on. Reassembly is quite straightforward. I started with the rear plate, and then I moved to the sides. Though, I believe technically I may have done the face plate and sides in the wrong order. However, I was pretty easily able to screw in the couple screws per plate, as well as slot the front plate on with little to no trouble. Finally, I just have to tip the unit up on its back to access the screws on the bottom plate, and the main covers have all been reattached. All that's left to do now is attach the carriage plate and the reset knobs. Ah, but of course, there has to be one final goof. I forgot to clean in place the lever caps. So, of course, they get the alcohol treatment and a good rub down. And finally, we place the lever caps and finish our little CW8 restoration. Okay, so yeah. cool. Wow. Ooh, so shiny. So very wow. Pretty. Great. Oh, all right. Now that we've cleaned the CW8, why don't we show off a little demonstration of its capabilities, and I'll walk you through how to use the calculator. Let's start with the basics. Keyboard entry and clearing is fairly straightforward. Entering in a number is as simple as pressing the corresponding digits on the eight-digit keyboard. Of course, you can assign a floating point anywhere on the keyboard using the small dials at the bottom. These can also be used as commas, stops, and other things to help with either tabulation or larger numbers. However, you only get eight digits on the CW8, of course. Now, when you've made a selection, you can either clear it by pressing the zero button at the very bottom of the keyboard for that corresponding column, or you can press keyboard clear. This will wipe the entire keyboard, save for any digits that are locked, which brings us to our next topic. Keyboard locking can be done in two different ways. The simplest is moving this lever, the keyboard lock lever, into its locked state. This will prevent any of the digits on the keyboard from being altered. None of the columns can be pressed now. Moving the lever back to where it was, we now unlock the keyboard and can either clear or alter digits. However, there is another clever little trick where you can lock each of the digits per column. By pulling up 
on the clear or zero key for that column, you lock in whatever digit you've entered into that column. Not even keyboard clear will clear this digit. Now. Basic addition and subtraction is also incredibly simple. Simply enter a number into the keypad and then hit either the addition or subtraction button. Doing so will increment the counter or decrement the counter, dependent on what you've just done, as well as add or subtract that value from the accumulator. The add lever is particularly handy while performing operations on completely different numbers. Say you were working on an invoice and wanted to total the cost of whatever object or service you are providing you would flip the add lever downwards, and doing so will clear the keyboard after every single operation. There is an overflow bell provided to alert you of either overdrafting or rolling over the maximum number of digits in the accumulator. Since there are 16 digits in the accumulator, this would take a value of 999999999999999 or 16 nines to accomplish. On the left of the unit, there is a lever for counter control. Normally, the counter will increment with every addition and decrement with every subtraction. However, moving this lever downward inverses the behavior. Now, adding will decrement the counter, whereas subtracting will increment the counter. Clearing the counter in the accumulator is as simple as pulling the tabs to the right of the carriage. If you want to clear either of them independent of the other, however, you can always twist this tab into an angled state to prevent that line from being cleared. In addition, you can clear both the accumulator and the counter by having both of the tabs set to their horizontal state and pulling on the upper tab. This will pull the lower counter tab with it. To tabulate or to move the carriage is another simple task and can be done with the shift keys. Pressing this key moves the carriage to the right and pressing this key moves the carriage to the left. Using the enter dividend key or the enter div key, it is possible to tabulate. This will move the carriage to the left about eight units. This allows you to either store two separate numbers for operation or can be used for much more accurate floating point division. Basic division can be done without the enter div key. Simply enter something into the accumulator and then enter the divisor into the keyboard. Push down both division keys simultaneously and the Frieden will divide. The remainder will be left in the accumulator. As mentioned earlier, the enter div key can be used for floating point division. This is particularly handy when you need slightly more precision. In fact, using a couple of measurements here of a circle, I can very quickly demonstrate calculating pi from the circumference of that circle and its diameter. And as you can see, we're pretty accurate. You may have noticed in my previous examples of division that I used both the left and right divide buttons. Actuating the left button without the right button gives you the tens complement of division. Only when you push both together do you get your actual result. Since this machine lacks automatic multiplication, we will need to manually do it using tabulation. This will involve shifting the carriage and entering our multiplier into the counter. Let's say that we want to multiply 11 by 23. Enter 11 into the keypad, and paying careful attention to the counter, increment it three times. Now, shift the carriage once to the right, we are now entering into the tens place of the counter. Increment it two further times, and your result of multiplication is stored in the accumulator. In much the same way, we can also do squares. In this case, let's do 12. Enter 12 into the keyboard. Now, increment the counter twice in the ones position, shift to the right to the tens position, and increment it once. 12 squared is now stored in the accumulator. 
All said and done, I think it's obvious that I've got quite the soft spot for mechanical devices like these. They're just so incredibly fascinating to me, and they occupy that awkward time between electronic logic, uh, chips and things like that, and manual cranked calculations. These Frieden calculators were some of the most impressively designed pieces of equipment I've ever laid eyes on. Performing such a relatively simple task becomes infinitely more complex when you're forced to do it entirely mechanically, and that complexity doubles when you make that machine user-friendly. The fact that a CW8 is only 40 pounds or so is miraculous for what it's doing behind the scenes. There's a lot of very clever minimization and elimination of redundancy that makes the deep that makes the CW8 the prime candidate for my tax fraud operation. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. Um, I'm just happy to get this done. It is so much fun working on the Frieden, and it has been a joy to try and get this working, especially with uh, little to no uh, documentation on the CW8 itself. Curious Mark's videos obviously are what tipped me off to the Freedens in the first place, and his scans of the W model uh, operational mechanical guides was indispensable to getting this video ready for you. Um, yeah, just thanks for sticking around, I suppose. I'm going to be making some more music soon. Uh, things got a little hairy with some family situations, and I have had negative free time for like a month here, unfortunately. But I plan on getting back into the swing of things. I need to rewire the studio again, because of course I need to rewire the studio again. I added like two things and it ruined everything. So, whoops. Uh, maybe I'll do a video of that sometime. That could be kind of cool. It's uh, quite the hodgepodge of a studio. Uh, just random shit everywhere, but, you know, that stuff's kind of entertaining, right? Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.